Hi everyone, this video is about an interesting gravestone at Ebenezer United Church Cemetery in Campbellville, Ontario, a heritage site that's been a place of worship since the 1820s. While there I came across a fascinating unique gravestone to a man named John Ramsey. After doing some research I found some interesting tidbits of information that give us some insights into his life, character, and interesting hobbies. Behind every stone there's a story, especially when the stone is as unique as this one. Hope you enjoy. John Ramsey was born on July 9, 1825 in a log house in Aramasa Township, Wellington County, the son of John Ramsey Sr., a settler from Donegal, Ireland who came to Upper Canada in 1810, and Rachel Cleaver of nearby Nelson Township. Rachel's family originally hailed from Pennsylvania, and her father, John Cleaver, employed Ramsey during the winter. John and Rachel married in 1821 and settled in Aramasa, now part of Guelph. Their log house was built in 1823 with the help of neighbours from all over the township and measured 24 by 30 feet. The previous year they bought a 100 acre farm in Nasagawea across the town line from their Aramasa house, giving them property on both sides of the line. Sadly, John Ramsey Sr. died in June 1832 at just 39, when John Jr. was only 7, leaving Rachel to raise John and his older sisters Mary and Martha while also providing for the family. Despite the difficult circumstances, together they made a good living. One interesting piece of information is that Rachel planted the first apple trees in Wellington County. She lived to 69 years old, passing away in 1868. Both Rachel and John Sr. are buried at Ebenezer United Church Cemetery, near John Jr. In his early years, John Ramsey Jr. dealt with the difficulties of rural life, including finding a mill to grind wheat and to flour. The first mill nearby was approximately 30 kilometers through the bush in Georgetown. Keeping sheep from being attacked by wolves was also important, especially as many clothes were made from their wool. Like most others in the county, John Ramsey Jr. was a farmer and decided to stay on the family farm for his entire life. On July 6, 1848, he married Mary Ann Daniels three days before his 23rd birthday. They had two daughters, Emmeline, born in 1850, and Martha, born in 1854. Emmeline married a farmer from the area named Colin Cameron, and they stayed in Nasagoea Township. She died at 60 in 1910, the cause of death being stated as general debility, a sort of catch-all on old death records, often when doctors weren't certain of the exact cause. John's other daughter Martha married a farmer named James Watson, also of Nasagoea, but tragically passed away on November 15, 1886, at just 32, of complications after giving birth to a stillborn daughter just three days earlier. The sad circumstances can be gleaned from the provincial death record, which shows them both on the same page, as well as a notice in the Acton Free Press from November 18, 1886. Sadly, John also lost his wife, Mary Ann Daniels, at just 59 in July of 1882. Her death record mentions that no report was sent by her physicians to the registrar, but that her death was, quote, understood by the relatives to be a sort of consumption, unquote, which during the last three months of her life produced, quote, aberration of mind, unquote. Mary's obituary from the Acton Free Press, July 20th, 1882, reads, Mr. John Ramsey met with a sad loss in the death of his wife on the 13th instant. She had been low for a good while, and her death was not unexpected. A large number of neighbors followed her to the last resting place. John didn't remarry, and during the last three decades of his life, he was taken care of by a local woman named Mary Lang. Mary is mentioned in John's obituary, and we can also see her presence in his house from the 1891 census, aged 27, in which she's listed as his housekeeper. John took an active interest in local politics and was elected a member of the Nasagawea Council in 1863, and was subsequently Deputy Reeve, Reeve, and Warden. In 1890, he was elected President of the Halton Farmers Insurance Company, and he held that office for 20 years. Outside of politics and farming, John was also a fascinating character with interesting hobbies. 
he is known to have enjoyed making rustic chairs, and in his portrait from some time later in his life, he appears to be seated in a rustic chair which may have been his own creation. He also was known to give chairs he made free to friends and neighbors. John lived on the family farm for his whole life, about 90 years, and then, about three months before his death, he went to live with Mary Lang, his housekeeper, and her husband Robert, on Arthur Street in Acton. After having a stroke there, he sensed his life was coming to an end, and asked to be brought back to the farm to spend his last days. He passed away peacefully on Friday, October the 1st, 1915, at the age of 90. We are told from his obituary that at his last birthday party in July on the family farm just three months earlier, over 150 people from all over the county attended, a testament to his standing in the community. And now we come full circle to his gravestone. Throughout his life, one of John's hobbies was collecting different kinds of rocks. Sometime later in his life, he had a tombstone made from all the rocks in his collection, and it now marks his grave beside his family members in Ebenezer United Church Cemetery in Nasagawea. The unique look and composition of his stone makes it stand out immediately when you see it in the cemetery. It was, and still is, an object of interest, and this 1965 photo from the Wellington County Museum and Archives, as well as mentions in old issues of the Acton Free Press newspaper, show that it has been fascinating people for over a hundred years now. I hope you enjoyed learning about John's story, as I think it's an excellent example of how just looking at a unique gravestone and asking, who is this for, can often lead to a fascinating adventure into the past. A special thanks to Karen Wagner, archivist at the Wellington County Museum and Archives, for her help researching for this video, and to Karen and the Wellington County Museum and Archives for permission to use the great photos from historic Wellington County. Please like the video and hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed it and want to see more. Thanks very much for watching.